I'd like to introduce you to an unusual musical instrument. This is called the kithara. It is the word where we get our word guitar. And it was a musical instrument very popular during the golden age of ancient Greece. This is a nine-string reproduction, which was made by Anastasios Kumaxis in Thessaloniki, Greece. This is a modern instrument. It has nine strings, which I have tuned, more or less, to a B minor scale. As you can see, this instrument is provided with some very unusual features, which make it what it is. For a very long time, archaeologists and musicologists and historians and art experts and all the others believed that all these peculiar curly cues that you see in very unusual features, these two pillars on the top and uh, these discs on the ends, that they were basically nothing but ornamentation. They were just decorations. Modern research, however, has shown that this is not the case. They are, in fact, part of an extremely elaborate and very sophisticated system of articulations and springs, which allow this instrument to do some very unusual things that cannot be done on other types of lyres. I'm going to show you what I mean. First of all, uh, portamento is possible on the guitarra. Here's how it works. <laughs> That is the way a traditional, conventional lyre would be played in ancient Greece. But the kitara can do this. Now, another thing that is possible on this instrument is also vibrato. Now, some of you may be familiar with the electric guitar. Electric guitars are very often provided with vibrato bars or tremolo bars, or sometimes called a whammy bar. And in fact, it looks like that concept was in fact invented by the ancient Greeks 2,400 years ago. Now, I can play vibrato on this instrument in a variety of ways. Uh, here's a lower note. I can play vibrato very simply by doing this. What I'm doing it basically is pushing on this disc, and that is causing a change in the tension of the string, and that causes a vibrato. The vibrato rides just underneath the true tone, so you can do this uh, on the top end as well. actually manipulating this pillar called the pichis. And uh, they did this simply by moving their hand on it. Before I demonstrate this instrument, uh, there are a few little things I'd like to point out. First of all, we have no actual examples of ancient instruments. The only examples we have, all we know about them, comes from illustrations on Greek pottery and Greek statuary, 23, 2400 years old. This instrument can be played very much in the manner of a traditional lyre, uh, which uses something called blocking, uh, or the muting of the strings with the fingers, like this. <laughs> simply by muting the strings that you do not want to hear. Like all lyres, uh, of course, it's possible also to play the, a, a really a full spectrum of harmonics on it, which are marvelous. I love it. Uh, there is, that's the first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic. And you can also, when you play the harmonics, you can also displace the zigos and 
do all kinds of wonderful things with it. Uh, one other thing that I should point out, uh, I use a uh, foot pedal. Ancient Greeks often played their music, their lyres, their guitars, using an aulos player. An aulos is a kind of double folk oboe. And uh, I wanted a beautiful Greek girl, but she never showed up. So I have this instead. This is just a simple MIDI pedal. It's the same kind of thing that organists have, uh, where you can play uh, the pedals, the notes, with your feet. And this is an approximation of uh, a Greek aulos, which basically just was a kind of drone that went on behind the music, behind the singer, behind the lyre player. So that's my electronic aulos. Thank you.